Welcome to Win With Barlow, the podcast where we turn your entrepreneurial dreams into reality. With your host, Akira Barlow. Today, we're diving into the fascinating world of DNA testing businesses. Looking to maintain momentum or ready to scale? This series is your guide to success. Let's get started. Hey family, how's it going? Happy end of August. (laughs) Hey family and welcome back to the podcast. I know it's been a couple weeks. Y'all been asking me where you been, where you at. But I had to take a little break, okay? Your girl had to take a little minute to get rejuvenated. You know what I'm saying? So I can bring you some fresh new content. So you saw the title of the episode today. We're talking about how I prepare for an actual DNA testing appointment. So if you're new here, listen, I am the queen of DNA, okay? <laughs> Stop playing. I'm Akira Barlow. I just happen to be, you know what I'm saying, your extended cousin that just happens to know how to start a DNA testing business, okay? I'm not an influencer. I'm not a guru, none of that, okay? I'm just a regular person trying to help some other regular folks, okay? <laughs> so let's get right into it. How do I prepare for a DNA testing appointment? So if you've taken my DNA e-course, you already know that I have an intake form that I require, you know, the clients to complete when they schedule their DNA test. And so this intake form, of course, is going to give me all of the background information that I need in regards to who's testing, the children's name, addresses, phone numbers, copies of their identification, all of that, right? And so... That helps me to prepare for the appointment in advance by completing my chain of custody form so that when I show up to prepare, I mean, to show up to actually do the collection, they can just sign where I have highlighted for them to sign because I've already pre-filled that information. It just makes the appointment go by even more fast. Like doing it saves like 10, 15 minutes because I don't want to stand there filling out all this information, especially if I already got all this information. So I show up. With the chain of custody form already on the clipboard, I've highlighted where I need their signature. So that definitely helps me out from the very beginning. So that makes the test run smoother. I also have everything I need for the testing that one person like right there. I do bring extra swabs and an extra kit or so with me just in case something happens, somebody does something, just, just in case. You just never know. So I do have an extra kit on hand just in case we do need it. Now, I also make sure that, number one, I schedule in my CRM that this test is being scheduled, and I make sure that it's scheduled on my personal calendar as well as the business calendar. So that's key. I'm keying in all key information, who's being tested, the location, how much they paid, all of that. So even if there's a situation that I need to refer back to, I can just click my calendar and I can see the appointment and exactly who I tested and what the situation was like. It has saved me a tremendous amount of time and it has helped me to be able to jog my memory when I need to. So I'm scheduling in my CRM. You know, of course, as well, if you've, you know, had some interaction with me in regards like the back end of this, I told you that I use a CRM. I'll get into that in a deeper, in a, another episode but I like to keep it simple. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't want people to feel like, oh my God, I got to have all this stuff to do this business because you don't. Like you don't. My system is just a little bit more complex because, you know, my business goals are a little bit different. So I schedule in a CRM. If you want to start using one to kind of just keep a, you know, a flow of like your leads and your referrals and all that kind of stuff, I recommend Zoho. They have a free option. I put a link in the description for you if you're catching this on YouTube so that you can check it out. But you can kind of create channels and like fields that you can need that you would need to kind of like organize your business. You can also just use a spreadsheet too. Okay. Or just get a notebook and write it down. But I make sure I got it scheduled in multiple places. I also make sure that somebody knows who I'm testing and like where I'm going. So if I have a test scheduled, if I'm physically doing it, I make sure that I send my location to, you know, my husband or a friend or my assistant, like somebody knows like where I'm going and they know like if you ain't heard from me in like 30 minutes, you know, it's a problem. <laughs> okay. So especially if you're going to residential locations, when I first started, yes, I was going to people's houses because I needed to build it. Like I needed to build my business. So I wasn't going to say no, but I just wanted to 
always be safe. And one of those ways that I do that is making sure somebody knows who I'm testing and where I'm testing them at. I also make sure I know exactly what FedEx I'm using. Like, I'm not going to try to figure this out after I've done the collection and I'm riding around. Like, no, I need to know exactly where I'm going. Okay, the nearest FedEx is here and here. Just so that I can make sure I get this collection out of my position right away. And just based on my format, like however I'm doing this is. So let's say, for example, I'm doing it at a CVS pharmacy, right? Let's say I'm over in the pharmacy area. I met somebody. We sitting down on the bench. I'm doing the test, right? Let's just say, you know, I, I'm done. I don't want to get in my car and just be trying to figure out, okay, let me just Google a GPS and like GPS the FedEx and try to find one to go. I want to already know in advance. I like to give my clients tracking numbers so they can keep up with the collection headed to the lab so they can document the time as well. So it's important for me to get it out of my position immediately. And I also don't want anything to happen to it, you know, as a mobile collector. Now, if I'm doing them in house, I will, you know, allow my clients to come. And just at the end of the day, I drop them all off at FedEx or whatever. But if I'm doing like an extra mobile collection, I like to know what FedEx I'm using, like where I'm going to drop this thing off as soon as I'm done. And lastly, which is also very important, I make sure that I confirm, you know, this test with all parties. Like I'm not going to blindly just show up and hope that they show up. I make sure that I do a confirmation call, a confirmation text message, even, you know, a couple of hours before the test, I send a confirmation text, you know, just to be sure that we're all on the same page. It's also a reminder. It's also a great level of professionalism. People really like it. And I just make sure that they have the rules as well. Like I need you to understand, like, you know, what my rules are. Like I do have a few things that I put into place, like no extra company, like don't bring no extra guests with you. Okay. Just you don't need no more support. Okay. Just come on in and get it done. <laughs> also make sure that they're not like, you know, eating or using mouthwash or anything like that right before the test. So they're just a few things that I kind of like put into place. But for the most part, um, those are my, those are my basic <laughs> things that I do to prepare for a DNA testing appointment. So hope this was helpful for you. Let me know in the comments if you got anything you want me to elaborate on or any questions or whatever. And I'll see you guys in the next episode.